so much fun already. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of the Nonprofit Show. Oh, if you were in the green, win- green room with us, oh, good times, good times. <laughs> I am so excited to share the stage today with our guest, Miriam Dix, founder and CEO of 180 Management Group, which is one of our presenting sponsors. We'll get to that in a minute. So thank you so much. She's got so much to share with us today. We all know about strategic planning. Well, we don't know it all. So uh, get ready to learn more and add to that uh, toolkit of yours. It is, again, a pleasure to be able to have Miriam here representing 180 Management Group, one of our presenting sponsors. So excited. Bloomerang also, American Nonprofit Academy, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Fundraising Academy at National University, your part-time controller, Staffing Boutique, Inc., JMT Consulting, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. Thank you so much, many from the beginning, coming alongside us to make this possible. I am Wendy Adams, and I am so excited to be a part of the co-host cohort. Hopefully, at this point, you've met us all. Julia C. Patrick joins me today, and we've got Mitch Stein, uh, Miko Marquette Whitlock, Sherry Kwam Taylor, Meredith Tarian, Tony Bell, and of course me, um, that we get to do this, and it is almost illegal. How much fun we have. <laughs> Let's jump into the rest of our time. Miriam, founder and CEO, like I said, of 180 Management Group, tell us, tell us about your why. What do we, what do we need to know about you today? Oh, wow. So my why, why do I do this work? Well, I will say that it was born out of my first uh, introduction into my big girl job, which happened to be in a nonprofit organization. And it actually prompted me to go back to school because I knew when I sat at that desk and I was working at that organization, that there was a better way to manage the work. Mm. (laughs) Church has begun. (laughs) And, And I didn't know what was wrong. I just knew that something was wrong. Mm. And it wasn't that we weren't doing good work. It wasn't that we weren't serving the community. Well, I just was felt I felt like I was being worn out every day coming in to do this work. And I'm thinking that, that I shouldn't have to feel this way. Mm-hmm. And so that prompted me to go back to school. Uh, it prompted me to really have an eye for culture and for how people work together and what makes an organization tick, what makes an organization work really well and what doesn't. And that's what prompted me to do this work. Okay, wow. wow. I I feel like we could like end the show right now because, you know, I think what you just said is really profound because I think a lot of us feel that way, Mm -hmm. but it's fearful to say that. It's very fearful to say that. And um, especially when there's so many lives at stake, I mean, depending on what service you work with in, in, in terms of our sector, um, that's a really bold thing. Good for you, Miriam, mm-hmm. for staying in the industry and not just saying, I'm leaving and going to the steady paycheck and bigger paycheck, <laughs> right? Well, you're so right, Julia. And then Miriam, you jumped in and said, it needs to be a change and I'm going to be a part of it. And yeah. that's what we're going to talk about some today. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sounds good. Really, really <laughs> cool. So we're talking about strategy and we're talking about strategic planning. This is the time of year. A lot of organizations are starting it, finishing it up, depending on their fiscal, you know, uh, structure, all this. And then you like throw a total like idea and it's like assessments. So talk to us about the value of assessment before strategy. You know, when I am working with organizations and I'm, you know, in the midst of working with some folks now who are ready to, you know, work on strategic planning for, you know, the upcoming fiscal year. And, you know, when we talk about assessment, it's usually in the form of community needs. Right. So so we're going to do the strategic planning. We're going to go through this process. And what? Oh, by the way our thrust is going to be making sure that we have incorporated what the community needs, right? So we don't want to be you know, providing services and doing all these things. And it's not what our community really wants or needs. And so let's make sure that we are interviewing. Let's sure that we're making sure that we have statistics or we get the, you know, the, the, the data that supports, you know, the programming mm-hmm. that we want to do. But this is the thing. It's always usually external. Mm-hmm. We're wanting to know 
what everyone else needs, but we're not looking at ourselves. And so when we think about that assessment process, we need to have a both and approach. Yes, we should be doing the assessments for what the community needs. Yes, we should understand the data that supports our programming efforts, but we also need to know what's in our house. Woo! What, what wow. do we have in our house? Because at the end of the day, you can develop a strategy that, that you can't even pull off because you don't have the resources in the house and hope is not a good strategy for that. <laughs> say that hope is not a good strategy for hoping that you can get work done that you you know vision <laughs> that vision has led you to right so so what is the internal wow. assessment that we need so that we can uh effectively um right. plan for what our organization can handle and that's where this assessment comes from yes, yes. okay yeah my job because i've been a man for 30 almost 40 years, I've been a part of strategic planning for nonprofits. I have never, ever, ever heard anyone mm -hmm. say, let's look at what we have. I mean, I think a lot of times people are like, oh, no, we can't do that. No. Yep. It's easy. It's easy, right? But to actually say, OK, well, what is it we can do? What is our capacity? Where should we build it? Where should we nurture it? Um, can we go out and get somebody to invest in it or fund it? Um, holy moly, this is like a game changer. Yeah, you know, because it's the difference between, there are two parts to that. It's what do we have in our house and what do we need in our house? What right? need, so, yes. So the have is our assets. We already have some assets. They may be underutilized, but if we never assess it, then we won't know. And so what are the assets that we already have in-house that we can still utilize and grow and mature um, versus always thinking that we have to get it from outside the house? Sometimes it's just a misappropriation of the resources that we have, not that we don't have them. But again, that's where assessment comes in. But then it's, you know, the other side of that is what do we need in the house? Because if our if we're thinking broadly about what what we how we're going to serve the community, mm -hmm. then what resources do we need internally to make that happen? So I think there are just two parts of the of the internal assessment. What do we need and what do we have? Julia. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I've wasted my life. <laughs> you know, really, no, I mean, I, I hate to say this. It kind of breaks my heart and makes me want to spit up at the same time because I'm like, sometimes you're called, you know, as a community leader or a stakeholder to go in and, and review a strategic plan. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know I've done that a lot. And sometimes it's like, you know, sit in a room go away for a weekend, show up and, and sit in a conference room for an hour, whatever. And a lot of times it's so easy to say, oh, well, no, you're never going to get to do that. Yes. But you never actually step back and offer an, an educated review of why that might not work or, or ask the question, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. do we have this internal makeup set up to achieve this? Um, so, Wow, Wendy. It, it's mind blowing because it's it really is so simple. Taking a look at who we are. We 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 said that what's your why? Right? Coming back to who are we? Why are we? And what's the need? What can we do? What's been tucked in a corner? This is mm -hmm. we've been overlooking or just too afraid. I mean, Julia, you said it. Is it just fear? Yeah. And yeah. so when we talk about this, Miriam. I mean, to me, this seems like something you might have to have a facilitator because mm -hmm. can you internally ask these questions without getting people freaked out? Yeah. Um, and then also, what would you think that this the, the time investment would be? Mm. Like, how far do you back up in order to be able to move forward? Because those are kind of this is dicey. Yes. Yeah, so, so I would say start small. Like if, if you've never ventured into this, you know, sort of. Uh, self-reflection mode uh, where you're doing that self-assessment, maybe you start small and do an employee engagement survey, mm. right? And so, you know, as part of the work we do at 180 Management Group, we do uh, what we call the groundwork assessment, which is our proprietary um, mm -hmm. uh, assessment tool that we use for strategy, helping to develop strategy for organizations. And it is really a, a combination or a combination between a readiness for change assessment as well as an operational audit. 
Mm -hmm. And we use that tool because if we're going to help an organization develop strategy, we need to understand the culture. (laughs) Because you know that the culture is going to dictate what's possible. And so Mm -hmm. we use that tool. But part of that tool is an employee engagement survey. So we're going to ask questions. And I'm going to give you a couple of these questions today just so you can think about it. But ask questions so that we can start understanding how employees see the organization and not just the leaders. We interview Mm -hmm. leaders because we're going to get some a lot of intel from a leader um, about how things are structured, why they're structured the way they're structured. But just from a general perspective and perception standpoint, we want to enter or we want to survey those employees. And so we're going to ask questions about. Um, do you have all the tools you need to do your job here? Uh, we're going to ask questions about your leadership abilities. Like, do you feel like you can grow here? Uh, do you have all the training that you need? We're going to ask questions mm-hmm. about how it is that communication happens here. Uh, and so we're going to ask those questions specifically when it comes to, you know, assessing your, your assets. What do they need? Yes. And do they perceive that they have what they need? Not just what you've given them. Because you could have given them what you think they need, but they don't think that's what they need. And so where's the disconnect? Is there a disconnect? And so we want to ask those questions like um, the the leadership development plan. If there is a leadership development plan for that employee, is there professional mm-hmm. development? If they're not a leader, some training they may not they may need. And then ask about mm-hmm. things like that connect them to strategy. Like, uh, do you understand our strategy? Do you feel like our organization is, is fiscally stable? Because those answers... <laughs> are going to help you later down the road. Yes. Yep. Yep. Woo. Culture oh. eats strategy for lunch. That's for what lunch. you just said. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 So then let me ask you this. And Wendy, I'd love to get your feedback on this as well, because it seems to me that this is a heavy lift and that you might reveal things that you're like, holy crap, we can't even get into the strategy because we got to address these other things. Or do you address the strategy because you have this knowledge? I mean, how, how does this? I think you, you want to take that information and build it into your plan. Okay. Right. So, so, you know, sometimes I will meet with a leader that says, oh yeah, we have a professional development budget. I'm like, great. Well, what was that based off of? Oh, we just think we want to, <laughs> we feel like people will tell us what they need. Like that's not the best way to go about professional development because it mm-hmm. should be a, a should be a, a sort of this coordinated effort between what the organization needs and what people want. Yes. So if I fund your professional development, it is based off a need we have for the organization. Plus, it should be something that you want to do as part of your role. And 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 so that way we're working together, and that strategic plan should should inform that, we'll right? Reflect that, and yeah. should, right? Reflect that. And so when you are doing this assessment, which is why I say start small, you do the 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 questionnaire, right? Mm-hmm. And you get the answers back, and then you say, okay, well we have some challenges with communication. We may have some challenges with professional development. Let's make sure that we budget <laughs> for some leadership consulting or coaching. Let's make sure we budget for professional development as part of our strategy uh, for our workforce. And because I believe that's the biggest piece missing from most strategic plans is workforce development as part of your strategic plan. Everything you're saying is in both. This is not two separate siloed spaces. We've got to do it at the same time. And Mm -hmm. it determines where we start. Julie, your question of, you know, does this dictator that it, it, where do we start is what I'm hearing. Like doing those assessments is going to say, Mm. this is where we begin. Not that we don't begin, but where, where. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wendy, when, when you're out in the community and working with clients, I got, I hate to ask this question, but like what percentage of, of our sector do you think it even understands this or, or thinking about this? Under, understands? <laughs> oh, that's a low, that's a low number. Truly, as I'm walking through this space, you know, if, if 30% actually have a grasp of, truly, and, and it is a lot of what we're talking about next, like, do you, are you ready? We all know change is inevitable, but are you ready for it? And they think that they are. It's, Miriam, you touched on it. It's being clear as to why are we even talking about this? Why are we even having this conversation? So, yeah, it's a low percentage, unfortunately. And that's, that's, our, that's our work. 
is to educate. Yeah. It is to educate. And I do think that some words are scary. Yeah. Some terms are scary. Yes. Um, especially if you feel like those terms are coming from corporate America. Mm. Right. <laughs> so if I talk about, you know, what is the workforce um, plan or strategy or manpower plan is a word that I would use. It's it's sort of foreign to to the industry or the sector, right? That we would have a manpower plan as part of our strategic planning process. And so it is a lot of, to Wendy's point, it's a lot of education mm -hmm. to say, this is something that's been missing. We didn't know, you felt it, you just didn't know what to call it. What and to now call we're it. Right. And right. now we're giving yeah. for it. You know, I think it, uh, we were talking earlier in the green room, it's that frustration that that makes you disengage from the process of strategic planning. Mm -hmm. Maybe not even in your own organization, but just generally and psychologically, you're like, oh, I hate this. So what happens when you have that lens? You don't show up and you don't work to the best level, whether you're a board member, an employee, C-suite, stakeholder, even stakeholders, right? That's right. It clouds the lens. That's what you do. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It, yeah. really, it really does. Let's um go a, a little deeper then. Like, how do we stay on course? How do we look at this process from the beginning to the end, um, given that it's going to be a heavy lift for mm -hmm. some organizations to even move into, into strategic planning with these questions and thoughts to begin with, right? So mm -hmm. how do we navigate forward and make sure that we're monitoring it, for lack so, of a better word? There was something you said earlier, earlier, Julia, about how difficult it is to get, you know, 30 days, <laughs> 30 days from the end of the year, realize that, man, I had all these things planned, but didn't get to do them. <laughs> like, how, what, how did I miss all of these things, right? Yeah. Well, one thing that I think is very important is that we build work plans from our strategic plan. Mm -hmm. And our mm -hmm. work plans are tied to our performance evaluations. Oh. Okay. So, so let's say we have a very high strategic goal for the organization. How do we then cascade that goal down into work plans for all the departments or, or individuals who are responsible for making that come to fruition? So then we have our own individual goals. And then how do we tie those individual goals, whether it's department or individual uh, employee goal, how do we tie that to your performance evaluation? And then are we having some sort of check-ins throughout the year? Because at the end of the day, even if it's tied to performance evaluation, we don't want to wait until the end of the year to say, oh, how did you do this year? We should be having some regular conversations with those who have goals that are sort of uh, cascaded down to them that really build up to the larger goal to say, are we on track or are we not? And if we're not on track, then what's our mitigation plan, mm -hmm. right? So that we can get get back to what we need to do. But I really, you know, that's one thing that I learned uh, when I moved out of sort of that smaller nonprofit space um, after I went to school because I was frustrated about like, why does it have to be this so hard? I learned about prescriptive management. Mm. And one of the goals for prescriptive management is to have cascading goals and work plans that tie to larger goals and use your performance evaluation to make sure we're staying on top of those things. Miriam, I've had the opportunity to experience both sides. I'm sure we all have. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I got to an organization where that was happening. Oh, oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. All to the point where it reflected in my calendar. So everything yeah. you're saying, yeah. right? So mm -hmm. to be able to have those touch points, it's got those have to be planned. We're right. talking about this big, hairy, audacious strategic plan. It's got to reflect in what, when are we meeting to see mm -hmm. if we're course correct needed, and yeah. how do we stay on course? It, yeah. it, that was game changing. And and to be able to speak that into my current clients, yes, absolutely. absolutely. Because then we can add in, like you said, the timing. So mm -hmm. if you know that a certain part of the plan has to be done because it's contingent, right? There's some contingencies there. Yes. If a certain part of the plan has to be executed within the first six months of the year, if we're at month five, we know, and we haven't met the goal, mm -hmm. we know that if we are able to make that time up in 30 days, then we're going to have to 
somehow figure out mm-hmm. what do we need to do for the rest of the year to meet this goal. That's and so true. if we don't build in timelines and deadlines and, and into our work plans, then we still are going to miss the mark because mm-hmm. inevitably something's going to come up that's going to mm-hmm. sidetrack you. Yeah. Just that's just life, right? That is life. Yeah. Regulatory change. There may be some, uh, you know, uh, natural disaster. Yes. There may be uh, some sort of um, financial crisis. Whatever it is, something's going to come up, and it's going to derail you. And if you, just like they say about money, like if you don't plan for somewhere for your money to go, it'll find somewhere to go. Same thing. <laughs> <laughs> about your time. If you don't plan your time, your time will get away from you. So yes. that, to me, that is the, the best thing you could do is from the beginning when you're working through the strategic planning process to develop work plans. Mm-hmm. Let me ask you uh, an, an administrative uh, question. I've heard a lot of organizations and I haven't seen this done very well, but I've heard of a lot of organizations designating somebody as the strategic plan champion. Because I love your your process, but ultimately I don't I think it could be like, oh, I thought you were doing that, right? I thought you were monitoring. Like, how do we make sure that we're we're doing this, right? Like is it can you give us a recommendation? Well, when it comes to monitoring, it's all of our responsibility. <laughs> But the the, play, the problem, I think, is is the communication, like you said. Who is the person that's responsible for what part of this? So when you're building out work plans, those work plans should be tied to roles. Okay. Right? So, you know, let's say you have this goal to, um, I don't know, feed 5,000 people, right? Mm-hmm. And... And part of that means that there's a you know partnership with an organization that's going to supply you with maybe canned goods or something. And um, that particular procurement process or that partnership belongs under a particular role in the organization. Well, then that person should be responsible for making sure that as, at a, as a high level procurement is in their wheelhouse, they should be reporting out whether or not they're meeting their goal. So part mm-hmm. of it is that person responsible, not only for meeting the goal and monitoring the goal, but also communicating up to others because they're in it. It's a shared goal, right? Mm-hmm. The 5,000 is a shared goal, but mm-hmm. the procurement process is a part of that shared goal. And so when are we coming together to have conversations about where we are in our processes mm-hmm. or in our, mm-hmm. our, our metrics or meeting the goals? Mm-hmm. And so that communication piece, I think is crucial because we don't have regular meetings and not just mm-hmm. meetings that don't have agendas, not just meetings that just are there mm-hmm. for us to each other, not just meetings where it can go off the rails, but we have some very dedicated, structured meeting time to talk about our goals. <laughs> we don't have to go back and revisit the entire strategic plan, but we should have milestones within that strategic plan that requires us to meet and mm-hmm. communicate where we are as a team. And I think that's where you can find that that cohesion. So it's not just, oh, that was your job. No, we come back together. We're all at the table to report on our own specific responsibilities toward this goal. Accountability. That's what we're talking about, mm-hmm. right? Yep. Keeping, exactly. keeping each other accountable in the space. Yeah. Exactly. You know, this leads me to my final question. And we don't have a lot of time left, Miriam. But how do you navigate uh, staying on, on track, using that compass, between your C-suite and your board. I was on a mm. board once that before every meeting, and we met monthly, um, the strategic plan, a metric, was printed off on 11 by 17 and passed around. So this was a long time ago, before digital board meeting space. And um, we would, it was pretty quick, but we would kind of see, you know, like in a color coding environment where things were and all that. And it was interesting because I felt a lot of times as a board member, I was, I didn't have the information because I wasn't with that manager. I wasn't, you know, I was like, well, wait a minute, did they get this done or whatever? And it, it it's like sometimes that strategic com- uh, comparison between board goal, a board strategy mm-hmm. and an uh, organizational strategy, how do we marry those two and get get clear with where things are going? Well, I think it's important to know. So, of course, there's this piece about, you know, board culture. Yeah. <laughs> right. So so if the board has the, you know, the perspective that they should have a lot of management information 
that needs to be tightened up to say what information do you need as a board member so that when the management arm of the house <laughs> is producing yeah. the information for the board, they're producing the right information so the mm -hmm. board can make decisions, right? So some mm -hmm. of that is just preparation for reporting. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> not all reports are good reports. Nope. And so, you know, making sure that it's clear that this report uh, or these reports, the set of reports that you're giving to the board I, are, are, are supporting the strategic plan, mm -hmm. because if they're not supporting it, you're going to have questions and you shouldn't be left with management questions as a board member. You Much like to to take <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Just as you said about meetings, meetings need to be purposeful and and you know that's what you're speaking out it needs to be information that's going to move us forward one of the things and we're running out of time that i did most recently was we had an intranet space right mm -hmm. so board that's where they were getting into and it was a ticker across the top so internal and and board can all see the same where we are where we are to that overarching and and so you have those milestones like always in front of you when you're getting your intel so it is it's making it useful and accessible exactly exactly and i know there's some software applications now when mm -hmm. it comes to like uh you know using or hosting information that the board can access yes. uh, regarding reports and minutes and all sorts of things so that it's not so much paper um so there are ways to make that cleaner but the same thing the same principle holds true junk in junk out so if you're mm. still not putting the right information in the system for people to access they still are going to have questions <laughs> they're still not going to be able to make decisions because they don't have what they need, what they need. and so it's really about cleaning up the the information the reports uh so that they they really tie in well to the strategy mm -hmm. yeah i appreciate you saying that because i think that's you know part of the exhaustion that people have is that it's really hard to keep going after something when you're not seeing movement when you're mm -hmm. not seeing success mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. it's just so mm -hmm. much easier to disengage and say oh well i'll focus on this or i all right or worse, I won't focus on this, right? Yeah. 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 Or have disengaged board members because they feel like their time is wasted. Oh, yeah. that's it. I'm, if I'm not getting information, I'm not seeing the dial move. And if I request it, we're still not making any progress. Then why do why I need to keep up? You know, coming to this meeting every yeah. you know quarter or whatever it is, whatever the cadence is, mm -hmm. and I feel like I can't meaningfully contribute to the conversation. No, and it doesn't. I mean, I think it just it just navigates you away from things. Okay. We don't have any time, but <laughs> you leave us with this amazing, amazing quote. It costs more to stay the same. How should we be looking at this as, as an investment? So the time you spend on the front end assessing mm -hmm. the time you spend on the front end, developing work plans from your strategic plan will be well worth your effort because on the back end, you won't have the disengagement. You won't have the people who are, you know, struggling to um, plug, in, plug into your organization, which causes turnover, which is expensive. And so if you put that time in on the front end, we guarantee that on the back end, you'll see results. I love it. I think you are just such an incredibly wise woman. Um, I always feel like I could come to you and say anything, ask any question, and it wouldn't cause your hair to go on fire, that you'd be like, okay, let's calmly look at this and let's, you know, we can navigate this, which is saying a lot because I think a lot of times, and Wendy, I don't know what you think, but mm -hmm. a lot of times you're hesitant to ask a question or bring up a frailty because you don't want to be judged or shamed or feel like an idiot. <laughs> Absolutely. And Miriam, that's what I really appreciate about today is that you gave that permission and you educated us on how to ask those questions. Why should we be asking those questions? And I love, we talk about ROI. You really honed in on the investment part of that, that acronym, right? And how important it is to look at it that way. So, so good. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, wow. Well, thank you so much. I, I just, you know, at the end of the day, it's coming from a place of I've been there with you. That's it. Right. So when you have folks who are coming in as consultants and they are sort of 
looking from the top down mm-hmm. or they haven't been in your seat, they really don't get it, then it makes it a little disconnect. There's a disconnect yeah. there. Yeah. But when you have been in the trenches, when you know what it feels like, you struggle with volunteers, you're struggling to meet, you know, your your you know fundraising budget or goals or whatever the case may be, and you start thinking about what is it that we can do, I'm all for that. Let's roll up our sleeves and have that discussion to say, Everyone's situation is a little bit different, but we're not so far different that we can't come up with some strategy, right? So let's do that together. I love it. Miriam Dix, founder and CEO of 180 Management Group. Check them out at 180managementgroup.com. You can learn more about Miriam and her team. They have some amazing um, information Mm -hmm. and posts that will really give you some great information. Another thing that's marvelous about the nonprofit shows, we have these amazing presenting sponsors, and they include Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Staffing Boutique, Your Part-Time Controller, 180 Management Group, where Miriam comes to us from, Fundraising Academy at National University, JMT Consulting, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. These are the folks that join us day in and day out. Ladies, thank you. I'm... I'm really invigorated by this conversation right, and, right. and looking more internally about my own goals and how I navigate them. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Absolutely. Brad. Oh it's, yeah. It's been a lot of fun. Hey everybody, each and every episode we, we leave with this message and it goes like this to stay well. So you can do well. Thanks so much. We'll see.